This is ECG exercise number 15 on page 92 of your Cardiac Trisarrhythmia Interpretation Workbook. And um, this is a good one. So just at a glance, uh, we can see that we have a pretty bradycardic rhythm. And so the question now is, what is this rhythm? And when you look at a rhythm like this, you know, your differential diagnosis could be um, third degree V block, second degree V block type 2. But let's get into the detail here. So the heart rate is about 33, and let's um, measure it out here. So uh, this QRS falls pretty close to the dark line. So that's 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, 43, 37, uh, 33. Uh, this falls just on this side of the dark line. So does this one. So heart rate's about 33 beats per minute. That's pretty accurate. Uh, P waves are definitely present and upright. The peer interval is 0.28 seconds, it's prolonged. Now you notice, and this is a key factor here, so here's the beginning of the, the P wave, there's the beginning of the QRS roughly, so it's definitely a prolonged uh, peer interval. But if you look at this peer interval, you'll notice that it's consistent with this one, and it's consistent with this next one, uh, and if you receive more of the ECG, you'd see that the peer interval is consistent, and that's a very important finding. The QRS is about point one four second or wide. Um, so the question is why is it wide? Because we have a P wave preceding each QRS, so presumably there's some aberrant conduction going on here. The ratio, <clears throat> if you'll notice on this one, is two to one. We have a P wave here, we have a P wave here, and we have a QRS. We have a P wave here, a P wave here, and a QRS. P wave, P wave, QRS, and so on and so forth. Now, I know this QRS configuration is a little odd, and I'm going to talk about that um, a little later. The rhythm is regular, and uh, this is another important factor. So given uh, you know the heart rate, given the fact that we have uh, a peer interval, which is um, it's prolonged, we'll, we'll give you that much, but it's consistent, that's important. And the ratio, which is 2 to 1, the interpretation of this is a second degree EV block type 2 with a heart rate of 33. Now, you may ask yourself, well, why isn't this a third degree EV block? Well, number one, um, the P waves, what some people will do is look at the P waves and map them out and see if they're equidistant and they march along. Well, they are equidistant, they do march along, but at no point does the P wave alter the QRS T wave morphology, not anywhere in this rhythm. So it can't possibly be a third degree AB block. And if we look at this next um, enlarged version of the same rhythm, so the, the big question here, here is where's the QRS, where's the T wave, where's the P wave? Well, um, this is a P wave clearly. Uh, this must be the QRS, and following the QRS is ventricular repolarization, and that's what this is here. That's a T wave there. So if this is a T wave, and this is the P wave, all of this here must be the QRS. That means that the QRS begins here and ends about here. Now, if we were to look at this a different lead, and I always recommend this, this is why I have a bit of a pet peeve with people who say, I'm going to teach a lead two course, or I took a lead two course. Because the trouble with a lot of people who interpret rhythms is they get fixated on lead two, and they never look at other leads. This is purely a dysrhythmia interpretation course, not a lead two course. And if you look at this at a different lead, what you probably see is something like this, a QRS that comes down like that, and comes down like that, and back up again. What we see here is just kind of a little glitch, but in fact, that's the entire QRS. This is a P wave here, P wave here, uh, QRS complex here, um, sorry, I meant to include that glitch there, and a T wave here. So that's a secondary AV block uh, type 2 with a heart rate of about 33.